everyone, the Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. We are back with the Toshiba Tecra uh, 730 is it? Um, XCDT. That is a bit of a mouthful, understood. Um, but last time on this channel we had this laptop. We found that um, the control key uh, didn't work. <clears throat> well, it, it kind of it worked if you uh, whacked it. Um, I uh, sacrificed the Alt GR key for it, um, but at least, you know, it's good to have the control key. It's good to have control. Um, got the FN key working off camera, but um, the install that's on this thing is absolutely dreadful. So, in this video, what we are going to do is, well, we're going to get rid of it. We're going to sort it out. We're going to put a brand new install of Windows 95. So... In order to do that, we are going to need an Izzy. Hi. <laughs> Izzy is uh, off camera and she is uh, currently uh, collecting uh, MacBook Pro power adapters. And there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do is, uh, is none of that. Um, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a Windows 95 CD-ROM. Also, at this point, we don't even know if the CD-ROM drive is working. So, um, this will be exciting for all of us. Now, the version of Windows 95 that's going on here, this being um, a 150 megahertz uh, Pentium MMX, is Windows 95 B. B for Bravo. So, <coughs> let's, uh, let's get started. What's on here now is Windows 98 First Edition and um, Windows XP Professional Setup that refuses to start. Okay, so we are in. Let's have a look at the uh, hard disk drive. Okay, what I'm going to do... That's not what I wanted. Uh, so we're going to delete um, this partition. Okay, let's see if I can get the CD-ROM. Yep, that works. Well, that's not worked as well as I was hoping. But what I can do is format C and we'll full format the hard drive. And while I'm doing that, I could maybe look at making a new Windows 95 boot disk. So the hard disk drive is formatted. So, I have another boot disk here. Hopefully this one will actually work. So I've burnt the same, uh, well, I've uh, written the same disk image to the new boot disk as was on 
this one. Excellent. So we have CD-ROM support. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make Drive C bootable. Whoops. Typing SYSA colon C colon. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to copy my Windows 95 files over. You've seen this, uh, guys, a million times before. So I don't think I will bore you with that. Okay, that's all the files copied. Now let's run setup. I will say the reason that I do it this way is, well, I like to run setup. I, I like to copy the files over. Um, to the hard disk so that it's not always going, oh, please insert the Windows 95 CD. And then I install from that location because Windows 95 does not seem to know, it does not seem to be able to differentiate um, between a CD-ROM drive's letter on a boot disk and the CD-ROM drive's letter on in the Windows installation. Um, so if you had a boot disk that mapped the CD-ROM drive to drive X, it would always then look in X colon backslash 195. And that's not going to do anybody any favours, okay? And, um, yeah, that's... The screen, the panel isn't stretched. I uh, probably should have done that. <coughs> CMOS has forgotten its settings. Yeah, well. And here we go. Choose a custom install. Put my product key in. And now to put in my name. Why I told it to find a network adapter then? That was a silly thing to do. Because the network adapter is here. Also, where's the modem driver? <laughs> I've just realised there's no modem driver. Oh well, I guess I will have to look it up. Also, the drivers I do have are on this compact flash card. Now I'm doing... Um, a Billy core trick here because what I'm going to do is slide it into this PCMCIA CF card reader and then when the time is right I'll drop it into one of the PC card slots. So I've just went through all the options and now we're going to install Windows 95. This part shouldn't take too long. But it is only a 150 megahertz Pentium, so obviously it's gonna take longer than it might on a on a VM or something like that. Well it's getting brighter outside. Right. See if I can stretch the panel. So I've turned off the computer, pressed and held the escape key. Check system then press the F1 key. That kind of uh, it kind of forced the system into a fault state. Um 
let's see. All oh, right, yes. Yep, text mode stretch. So it's only text mode that um, will actually work. That's a bit of a shame. But then, I mean, that's, that's something that these uh, Toshibas have always done. Just a shame that this one has an XGA display. That uh, makes things... Um, Makes things a wee bit small when they don't necessarily need to be. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Please wait while set up updates your configuration files. This may take a few minutes. Done. Now continuing to load Windows. So this hard drive does seem to be quite slow, but I mean, as well it might be, it's at least 23 years old, if not older. Completed updating files, continuing to load windows. I remember when those would appear. <laughs> It's like, oh, I've installed something serious now. And finally, we're at the next portion of setup. So now it's going to see what it can load. Programs in the start menu. Time zone. Um, Greenwich Mean Time. See if I can set the date and have it remember it. <laughs> Uh, 2020 um, June the 29th nope yeah yeah it's the 29th um, and the time is 16 16 42 We don't need to set up Exchange or a printer, starting Windows 95, and there we go. We are, we're getting there. Now, before we can do anything else, we will need to turn on the PC card slots. I've uh, discussed this many times on this channel, but um, I've always found it funny how Windows 95 and I guess 98 would too, I, even though it doesn't shut down and it actually uh, sets up the PCMCIA slots um, during setup. But um, it's like, oh, please turn off your computer, like you're away to install the slots. I mean, yes, you can get PCMCIA adapters for desktops that you can, uh, that are on add-on cards, add-in cards, add-on, whatever. Um, but no, that's not. <laughs> yeah. So that's Windows 95 installed. So I'll just go and turn on the PC card slots. I wonder.
if I just simply restart the computer, whether that would work. I mean, I'm not going to warm restart it. I am going to cold reboot it. Well, I'm not going to just restart Windows. I am going to restart the entire machine. And let's see if the PC card slots have turned themselves on. That was odd. Well, that worked. And there we go. So, what I'm going to do now is install some drivers. Please excuse my head being in the way, it's difficult being visually impaired. I know I should really get an other media box, so then I can just show it to you guys as I would, uh, well, just show the screen to you guys. I would like that. Excellent, kind of. That's the display driver installed. And there we go. That's the display drivers installed. Let's see if we can uh, up the resolution. Yeah, no worries, starting the machine. And there we go. Windows 95 is installed, but the machine is still a wee bit on the silent side. Now, I know the tremolos uh, reckon that silence is golden, golden. But, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. So, let's, um, let's sort that out. deal with that later on um but now what i want to do is get the sound up and running yep this is crystal audio so um probably has zero to nil support for sound blaster Now, hopefully, this will actually work. Or I will have to tell it where to go.
Well, let's um, let's see if we can get this going. Nope. I wonder if it needs another reboot. <clears throat> All right, so we have installed pretty much everything now. Uh, well, everything that we need to make the machine go, apart from the modem, that is. Not installed any games or any applications or any exciting stuff like that, but um, no matter. Um, but we're just going to uh, boot into Windows now and uh, we'll have some fun with this machine. Oh, and the CD-ROM driver, uh, even though that said it was for Windows 95, it's quite clearly for Windows 3.1 and DOS. Well, wait, wait, wait just a minute here. There's no MSCDX here. In fact, there's no DOS folder here. It's in Bill's house, Fred's house. Oh no, I'm doing It's a Wonderful Life uh, references in the mid and at the end of June. James Crevens, right. <laughs> and there we go. Windows 95 startup sound. Thank you there, Brian Eno. Um, but we have a utility called Magic CD Disk. Or Magic CD Disk. Or Magic CD Disk. Our magic desk. Don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but uh, never mind. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what we can do now, though, is uh, go on the network and um, set up some files. Well, set up some shares, rather. So, let's see if I can get CPU Z1. So, yep, this is a Pentium MMX. Um, and it does look to be a 150. 16 kilobytes of cache on a Toshiba mainboard with 144 megs of RAM and graphic device. Well, my life is so much richer for knowing that this computer has graphic device. Um, now let's see if we can get the modem going. Um, nope, not a PCMCIA modem card. That's queried in something. I think it's found one. <clears throat> of 
found one on Com2, that seems to be a sensible place to find a modem on a laptop. Um, so, there we go. And we have Toshiba Services. So that's Windows 95 installed. Um, what I will do is install, I will install IE5. I'm not going to install Internet Explorer. Uh, no, I'm not going to install the um, Internet Explorer Active Desktop Update. Because I think the machine is slow enough already. And this is the one that comes with everything. Well, not the out of desktop update, but certainly things like, um, I believe, Front Page Express. Uh, yep. And it even comes with um, Macromedia Flash and Shockwave Player. Would you look at that? I must admit, I did. This kind of reminds me of uh, being at school, because in 2001, there was a couple of machines that had IE3. Now, by that time, it was woefully out of date. Um, half the websites that we went on would not load, and it had just kind of made it so that um, you couldn't really do things on the internet. That, plus the, walled, the silly walled garden that the school was behind, where it was an opt-in rather than opt-out kind of a model, um, as in, rather than, uh, rather than flagging websites that were not okay to visit, you would have to flag websites that were okay to visit. And that was, <laughs> yeah, and, and that was obviously a very, 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 very tiny selection of websites. Um, so, ha um... So that plus IE3 just kind of made the internet almost unusable. Um, so I took it upon myself for some reason, Microsoft.com was one of the uh, visible websites. So I obviously um, followed the instructions of install Internet Explorer. Um, I nearly ended up installing a Czech version of the browser. But I didn't do that. Um, but um, eventually, you know, I eventually just managed to download all the files needed to install IE5, uh, put them in my user profile folder, and I managed to get that going. I managed to get that installed. Um, and I installed it on a couple of machines, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, because, well... I was going to use the internet. I certainly wasn't going to use this piece of garbage. But hey ho. <laughs> it was actually good to get a reasonably good uh, version of IE going and you, know, you could access what little of the internet we could. You want to know something? That was 20 years ago! <laughs> well, 20 years ago this autumn anyway. But meh, TV just shows how time goes by. I mean, I remember when my school actually went on to Windows 95 from 3.1. It was, it was like it was all shiny and new. It was like, you know, well... I mean, they'd been upgrading machines from Windows 3.1 to 95. Then they started installing a network around the school. Um, we had a server. It was good. Um, so yeah, that was uh, 
and of course uh, our math teacher, he was pretty good at IT, he had the best machines in the school. And it had all the applications you could ever want, even stuff like crocodile clips. That was fun. Putting circuits and putting fuses in uh, series in a circuit, adding a few 9 volt batteries in a switch and then flipping that switch and then watching the whole thing go kablooey. <laughs> But yeah, mechty me, that... Wow. <laughs> then again, I guess it would have made sense for uh, my school to completely overhaul their IT infrastructure. And 20 years later, I'm doing it. <laughs> Jings. Something to think about. Um... But yeah, it was 2000, and of course the year 2000 was a new millennium and everything had to be on you and we're all going to get digital radios and robotic dogs and, <clears throat> and then we're all, and then uh, all the kids were going to send messages to each other through the sur survey, uh, the, 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 the SRB goes. We were all going to go to the internet cafes and order shopping until we got, you know, and then those of us who could would get it through the home on our smart TVs. Yeah, smart TV, th th that concept was even a thing back then. <clears throat> In fact, who remembers the uh, Virgin Internet TV and the, uh, the Virgin Internet box? Were made by Bush. Now, of course, you had the Sega Dreamcast, which uh, you could hook a keyboard up to, and then you could get online through there. And and I remember, um, yeah, I remember thinking, oh, you could be able to do your homework on your Dreamcast, yay! That's the sort of gimmick that uh, a lot of kids would have used. Try and get a Dreamcast in the home. Well, I could do my homework on it. There's a PS2 had a DVD drive in there. Oh, but you could watch all your old war films on it. <laughs> old war films? 29 years old. I'll break your bloody neck, you cheeky bastard. Microsoft VM. It was nothing to do with Hyper-V, but it was everything to do with installing, uh, well, running Java apps and applets and what have you. And eventually, we see the desktop. And personalising settings. That is something we still see to, the, to this day in Windows 10. That dialog box. So, there we go. Oh, and now it's a way to take off. <laughs> Front page express, anyone. I used to love trying to write websites in there. Thinking, oh, one day I'm going to have my own website. And now let's fix um, the auto exec file. Right. Let's get rid of this load of raw bash. And the next time I restart the computer, that should be in working order. So this is a Toshiba Tecra 720, uh, 
XCDT all set up. And just before we go, I think we should do a quick canyon test. Because of course we should. Oh dear! How many channels of MIDI can that do? Three? Maybe four? <laughs> but there you go. FM synthesis MIDI provided by a crystal, a crystal uh, sound, ca uh, sound card thing chip. So, thank you all for watching. Please join me for my next video. Cheerio, bye.